is scheduled to start, so I propose that we start. Uh, Rick Clark apparently called in and said he won't make the meeting tonight. Uh, and I haven't seen Chris, but I don't know whether that means he's be here or not. So we'll just kind of wait that out. Uh, so I'd like to call the meeting to order and, and also indicate that Dan and I talked a little bit about how we might run this meeting. Since I wasn't here last time, I thought I'd do the first two. When we get to the minutes, since it was Dan's meeting, I'll turn it over to him and uh, he can pick the agenda up from there, uh, assuming that everybody here agrees with that idea. Fine with me. It's fine with okay, me. so so be it. That's that's what we'll do. Uh, as always, the meeting is is uh, recorded audio and video, and we have cards here. If anybody would like to get one of these cards, so if you want to look up the uh, the recordings, you can do it. It's on the back. It shows tells you how, tells you where. So if you want a card, they're up here. So the next topic we have is discussion and approval of the minutes from last time. And since I wasn't here, Thank you. I, I read the minutes, but I can't comment whether they're accurate or not because I wasn't here. Yeah. So Dan, it's, it's, here's the gallop. Any comments? Move mm -hmm. approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Sweet. Have to quick start. Yes. Public comments? Anybody want to start off with some? <clears throat> I'll be happy to. My name is Paul Walker, 52 Gilrain Terrace, Marks, Mass. I attended the last meeting and spoke. Tonight, I want to talk about the same issue. This is an unfunded, mandated demand by the federal government, which has been overturned. I don't know how many of you watched a national television half hour on this the other evening, which they discussed this program for 30 minutes as an unfunded mandate demanded by the EPA under the Obama administration, which is totally illegal. It has been overturned. I suggest that this committee take a hard look at what you're trying to do as far as what is now being called a national rain tax. That's what you're doing. You're taxing the droplets of rain that fall from the sky on my roof on my driveway, and you're taxing with that. How is this going to be accomplished? You thought drones were only for bombing terrorists? No. The federal government's going to fund drones so they can measure every square inch of every individual property in this country as this goes forward. As I mentioned the last meeting, there are several states and several towns which are going to appeal this decision, and I feel that we should too. I understand our city is in dire straits like a lot of other places. We're going to face an override very shortly. We need an override to take care of just the present problem. Now we're looking to tax me and you and our citizens for something that we don't create. I don't create rain. It's a natural thing. If it runs down my driveway, you're going to tax me? No way. Now, the fiscal situation in the Board of Public Works, I'm sure, is very needy. I couldn't agree more. However, this is not the way to do it and call it this kind of a tax or a fee. We've got to get a better solution. I have some articles here. If you want to, I'll pass them around. They're quite lengthy. Uh, consider all the ways we're taxed. When we're born, the birth certificate. When we die, the death certificate. 
When we make money, the income tax. When we spend money, the sales tax. When we own property, property tax. When we sell property, capital gains. When we go to a concert, a ball game, an amusement tax. When we own a vehicle, license registration, tolls, gas tax, special taxes on cell phones, tobacco, alcohol, energy. And when we die, they tax our income all over again. A death tax. Heck, they even tax our bowel movements, which is now going to be called a flush tax. We have got to give this a lot of consideration. Stop calling it a tax that is needed because of the rain and the government. Postpone this and use your common sense and see if we can come up with a solution to help the Board of Public Works. I met a gentleman today who was going to come to the meeting. When I got home, I found it had been changed from City Hall. When I left City Hall at the last meeting, everybody, as I know, I wrote it down. It was to hold it in the same place at the same time. At 4 o'clock, I learned that it was here tonight. I had several people that I am going to be embarrassed with when they show up at City Hall tonight, and it's not there. I understand it was posted on the website, but not everybody has a computer. We've got to do a better job even getting out the information about our meetings. I guess I'll close, but I still insist, and a lot of other people are going to too, don't call it a tax, don't call it a fee. It's got to be something to do with the Board of Public Works and the construction and problems that we have, not from something that they don't create on on their roof. Thank you, Mr. Thank Walker. you very much. Your points, I think, are very um, important, and we appreciate, and I, I'm, I'm not sure that there's a whole lot of argument that it's, um, that having additional taxes is a, is a burden that none of us would like to have. Um, as we tried to reiterate in previous meetings, this isn't really about the EPA mandate uh, as much as it is about flood control issues, uh, that it's an infrastructure uh, problem, much more so than it is responding to the EPA mandates. Um, the, the mandate for this committee, however, is not to decide whether it is um, appropriate or not to have a fee for stormwater. Our charge is to develop a, um, a model or a system of applying a fee that is fair and equitable. It's really the City Council and the DPW that take it from there. And all of your comments, as excellent as they are, I would repeat those when, when the City Council holds hearings, because I think that's where that needs to be heard. Our job here, though, is to keep focused on, you know, we have a pretty limited scope, which is this stormwater uh, fee you know, model or system of coming but up. But what is stormwater? Water that runs off my roof and on the roof. It is. So you've got to change your thinking. Well, you've got an infrastructure in this city that needs repair, and that's the way you've got to focus on it. We are. That's exactly what we're focusing on. And it's an ongoing problem that is, or an ongoing need. It's not necessarily a problem. The problem is, is that the city has not been able to address it adequately over the years. It's been postponed and put off. And now we're into a situation where it's because becoming the, crisis. The priorities were not addressed. I talked with a gentleman this afternoon that was going to be at this meeting. He today, reviewing the city budget, came up with over $100,000 worth of non-priorities. Non-priorities, $100,000 allocated this next year. Everybody, you know, and, and again, this is not the forum for discussing priorities because there's everybody has priorities. There's a lot of other people's priorities that aren't being addressed in the city budget. That's not really what we're trying to do here. So, again, I appreciate the comments and encourage that you repeat those probably in several months when it comes up to the city council. Any other? Um, is this enough? Yeah, Fred Zinlock. Uh, just to continue a little bit about what you said, that the, uh, the mission here is to consider an algorithm for funding this, but it seems to me at the last meeting we also left the issue of budget open. That was item number two on the mission plan. But anyway, be that as it may, uh, I looked at the table of numbers that you distributed last time, 
I think the numbers are very important. I looked at, for example, the impervious numbers that are on the sheet. Uh, three questions came to mind that I would hope would be answered along the way. First of all, what's considered an impervious surface? And you could probably answer that question by telling us or describing how those measurements were made. And I would also, be, also like to know what sort of accuracy is attached to those impervious uh, measurements. The last time we spoke, we talked about the parcel sizes and the variation in parcel sizes, <clears throat> and that if there's a large variation in parcel, parcel sizes, some people, if they're uh, build on the amount of impervious surface, uh, some people may be paying more money for less surface, other people will be having more impervious surface but not paying as much. And one way to resolve that or to examine that question in order to determine whether the method is fair is to look at the distribution of parcel sizes. And at the last meeting I suggested looking at the standard deviation. As I was driving home, I was thinking, and the standard deviation of the parcel sizes, which would tell you whether there's a lot of big ones or a lot of small ones, and how they're clustered around a mean value or an average value, you probably won't get very much information out of a single number. It'll be hard to interpret unless you know what that sort of thing means. But there is another way of doing that, and what came to mind as I was driving home is that you could easily cons cons construct a histogram. And basically a histogram takes all the parcels and it puts it, ranks them according to size and then groups them into groups. So the first group would have the smallest parcels, the next one would have the next largest and so forth and so on. The histogram will then show you how many parcels are in each group. So you would get a picture that sort of looks like this. So the people that are in here, that have a parcel size here, they have the average amount of impervious surface, and their fee will probably look pretty good to them. The people that are over here that have large parcel sizes that are still assessed on the average value, they'll be getting a good break, and they'll be very happy, even though it's not fair. And the people down here, they have small small amount of impervious surfaces, but they're still charged on the average. Mm. So they're getting screwed. So, and this type of chart for the parcel sizes is easy to create. You can do it on Excel. You can take the parcel sizes, put it in a, com a column of Excel, click the histogram button, and you'll get this plot. So if you're talking about having a fair method, I think you need to look at the parcel size. Make sure that they're clustered around a mean. There are not too many down here and not too many up here. Mm. I'll give you the graph to look at. Can I respond to that? I, sure. I think, Fritz, one thing we've seen happily enough in the proposals we have before us tonight is tiered sizes for residential parcels. That's fine. Uh, for one model is zero to half an acre, half an acre to one acre, and above one acre. For instance, that's just an example, and that would uh, attempt to address your concern, which is a good point. Okay. But I mean, what that would do is, is would show you if that is in fact necessary, right. or what the problem is. Right. Making it tiered will probably take care of it, but that will show you That'd quickly if there is in fact a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Anything that else? was just the 30 samples that I did to show you the graph to see how it looks. Yeah. You would probably have 6,000, and Excel can easily handle 6,000. I think it goes up to 62,000. You know, I agree. I think if we do a tiered um, approach, I mean, we, we have in the, um, let me blow it up. Yeah, actually, we don't. I thought that was in the, that data would be readily available, and we could do that for the 6,000 or so uh, residential. So the reason why it sort of concerns me is because when I did the estimate for my property in the CDM report, it was off by a factor of two using the average figure. Right, there's yeah. nobody here who believes CDM report has any of that. Yeah, so CDM sort of had like a question. single, they had a single, I and mean, the, the range of... You mean I read it for nothing? Yes, you did. You can get irritated about it, which I did too. And I got irritated yeah. about it for nothing. Yeah. 
So we do have several proposals, which we're going to get to shortly, I think, presenting sort of different, all have different approaches to uh, dealing with sort of the, one, that question as well as other, other questions. So um, in the back, yes? Yeah, Mike, let me, <clears throat> right now here I have some feeling that lawyers are going to become involved in this question at some point um, from the standpoint that if you call it a fee and it's approved only by the city council and not like an override which is approved by all the voters, it could be said, maybe, that this is an attempt to evade or go around the intent of the law of uh, setting up the override. Again, great question to bring to the city council. Appreciate um, the comment. Though. How was the original uh, other, the other two enterprise funds established? I believe they were established by a board of city council. Is that correct? Yeah. It, w it wasn't a vote. wasn't a popular vote. Correct. The referendum, in other words. But was it, it was not a referendum, vote, yeah. The vote of the city council. Oh, yeah. and that, that was... Only. I know, but it wasn't a referendum. Well, that's how it was done. Well, bet right or wrong. <laughs> and that issue was here tonight. The same problem. Don't do it. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I, Mitch Falotten, uh, 347 Audubon Road. I haven't been here before. Can you just explain to me format here? Is, there, is this the only time we get to ask questions? Or do you close the public comment section? Well, we, we have a, a brief focused public comment. And then once we start talking about really the work that we're focusing on, everybody's sort of welcome to, to participate. So it's... You know, we're gonna. We're, our main focus again is to uh, develop this algorithm method of uh, calculating and determining a fee that's fair and equitable. So this isn't the question about whether or not this is going to happen, or whether it's you know a, a legally appropriate or anything else. This is about if there is a stormwater fee that is going to be applied, how do we apply it fair and equitably, and that's the limit of our charge and there's really nothing else so I, I as much as it's as questions like some of the ones we've heard are relevant to the big question it's it's not relevant to the work that we're trying to do excuse me Dan I'd like to respectfully beg to differ with you okay. our primary charge is not to figure that algorithm that's one of them it's part of our charge we keep coming back to this that if I read the charge correctly although the agenda says that there is a final charge coming, which I will have some comment about when we bring that up. But if I read the charge correctly, there are four parts to the charge, and the final part of that job is to charge is to offer recommendations to the algorithm. It's not our primary charge. Yeah. Okay. Just want to, if, if I'm not correct, I, I will listen, but that's not how I hear the charge, that that's our primary objective. Well, why, why don't we then... And this is a good opportunity to read through the charge, which is something that was next on the agenda, just to remind ourselves what the charge is. We may is. have one additional public comment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Suzanne. Suzanne. Last question, though. So, yeah. we'll, if I'm clear, we'll have an opportunity to ask questions as you go through. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Yep. So, um, my name is Suzanne Beck. I live oh, at uh, 691 Park Hill Road, and I'm here representing um, tonight just to represent the Chamber of Commerce here in Northampton. And primarily just to kind of um, introduce the Chamber's interest in the work that you're doing. And we also can be a resource for um, providing feedback and input um, as you get further along in your you know, considerations of different proposals and, and how you might approach this. The one thing um, that we quickly realized uh, when the report came out and the, the amount of work was kind of itemized and broken down um, is that there, we're not at all questioning the need for this investment in the infrastructure. We've had a fair amount of experience as a chamber um, with this issue because we've been actively involved in the three county fairgrounds redevelopment. And there um, we have immediately run into the substandard conditions of the um, uh, drainage, the stormwater system. 
and the impact that it's having on businesses and um, and homeowners. So if there if there ever is a question in your mind about you know where how the chamber views uh, the need for the infrastructure, where I just want to be clear about that. You, you know that Bob um, Reckman is the representative of the chamber. We're very pleased that um, the, this group was set up with a representative. Um, we've had the benefit, therefore, of kind of his regular reports on what you guys have been doing. And the, the principle that you've uh, floated out there about in, within your formula um, allocating kind of or considering the shared resource of streets and um, sidewalks and parking lots as part of is something that we all share responsibility for um, I think is a very good one and we're you know eager to see that continue to be part of the formulas that you um, that you consider my last point and I'm sure we're gonna be seeing a lot of each other but um, my last point is the, to underscore the importance of public education. I don't know if that's your purview, but I can tell you this is not on anybody's radar. This is really, and in terms of significance, has enormous implications for um, every property owner in Northampton. And it's one of those, it quickly gets you in the weeds and nobody knows what it means and until they get a bill for $17,000, which is one of the you know calculations that was done um, so somehow in this process, there has to be a, a really thoughtful uh, plan for outreach. And we can, you know, obviously participate in that um, by communicating with businesses and property owners and, you know, holding small group meetings. But I honestly feel that if, if you don't take that time um, and leave it up to the City Council public hearings, that will be a, a real tragedy in terms of... Uh, the information that the public is really entitled to know before that. So, thank you for your time today. Thanks, Suzanne. And, and I think we'll continue to do what we can during these meetings to, to provide as much information and education uh, as possible. But the City Council and the DPW ultimately wants sort of the work of the this committee is done, well then have their charge is going to be getting getting that education to happen. And it's going to be a very important part of this, absolutely. So I'll, um, I'll read through the, uh, the charge. Uh, the task force will have the following charge. To del deliberate in public and conform to the principles of best practices as referenced in the city's best practices final recommendations to examine ways in which these costs could be funded, looking at what other communities have done in our own enterprise fund system. To recommend the general principles which should guide the new funding with particular focus on equity and transparency, and to offer recommendations about actual, actual formulas that might be employed. So in previous meetings, um, we've, I think, been focusing really on um, the first three, um, and I think we're going to continue to, to be going back and covering those items uh, throughout this whole process. I think it's a necessary uh, issue uh, that we continue to do that. I think one of the, you know, and, and maybe um, um, speaking out of turn, I thought that at one of our previous uh, meetings, as it was laid out in the minutes, uh, was that um, the uh, stormwater fee uh, was agreed uh, by the group as the, um, uh, you know, given the options, which were either an override as a possible way of funding, or a fee, or general fund, or general, or could be general, fund. or could be general fund. That the stormwater fee uh, was the most appropriate and had the most likely hood of, of getting sort of casting the net as wide as possible and getting non-tax, historically non-tax paying entities to participate in this particular um, exercise. So um, if we need to go back and go over that and, and rehash that, I'm, I'm open to do that. But I, I, my impression at this point is that we were working on the basis that um, a stormwater fee is what we're, what we're working on going forward and providing um, some models today 
I don't think this is going to be the end of it, but it's at least a starting point of some of the ideas uh, and to get some feedback from public that's here about what their thoughts are, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of ideas coming out of this. And I would also make the point that that fourth point charge, the first three points are essentially about process and informing ourselves what other cities and towns are doing and have done. Which the is fourth, what we yeah. The fourth point is the essential point of our charge. Come up with specific recommendations for them that might be, and I think that all the other three are very important, but I think we've made great progress on those, and we make some progress on a specific point. Mm. So we have, um, are there any questions before we move into um, the next item on the agenda? Nope. Which is brief. Um, I was informed that there is a, um, a May 31st deadline that the City Council has established for uh, this task force to complete its work. Is that correct? Yes. That's my understanding. So, so we've got five to six more weeks. Um, Excuse me, Dan. I'm going to try to keep my temper in check, but you got to be kidding me. I, I just can't believe that. Number one, it's disrespectful. Number two, it's out of order, and it's not something that we should be listening to four or five meetings into this. So if someone set a deadline, we're being told four or five meetings into it, that's transparent, and that's best general practices, you've got to be kidding me. So I, I don't accept that. Okay. And I don't know if anybody else wants to speak to that, but when I saw this agenda, I couldn't believe it. So who informed you? And how did they come to this? And what does that speak to respect for the public mm. who's coming in for the first time and as Suzanne said, doesn't even know and now there's a deadline that's imposed on us? The deadline is for the I don't, I, I, the I don't charge. care when, why okay. it is, why this came about this way is just completely inappropriate. I got an email, I believe it was from Jim, although I'd have to pull back out. Uh, it was... Uh, at the joint committee meeting, uh, was it this week or? It was last week. Last week, joint committee meeting, uh, Board of Public Works members and city councilors uh, spoke about the work being done by the task force here and had a discussion about uh, the overall schedule uh, and basically came to the conclusion that having a recommendation about uh, an equitable fee structure by the end of May would be needed in order for the council to be able to take that information and then work through their own process in terms of uh, crafting an ordinance and going through all their subcommittees and public process in order to get something in place by the fall. So that was my understanding from the meeting. So um, discussion amongst the councilors and, and the board members on the committee. I just sent the email. <laughs> Don't kill the I just recorded it on the agenda. <laughs> I understand. Well, so, can I ask a question? I'm just confused about process. And again, I apologize, I haven't been here before, but just heard about this recently. So, if your mandate is to have a public forum to help you make recommendations. That's to not our mandate, sir. It, I, we want to get public I input. Heard, I heard deliberate in public. That's what we're doing. We're doing that right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. But to do it in public means that people should know that you're doing it. Otherwise, what's the purpose of doing it in public? Correct. Right? right? Well, it seems to be a little bit of an oxymoron to me. So, I actually pay some calls to people that have, you know, not through Suzanne, but who have commercial interests in this town or investing in this town, and I asked if they knew that this was taking place, and they have no knowledge this is taking place. Wouldn't you want to hear from people that have invested in your community what their opinion about this process is, and also maybe they have some worthwhile feedback for you to deliberate on? as part of your process of doing it in public. I, I do agree that it's very unfortunate that the public doesn't know about this coming down the road. Anything we can do to let the public know would be great. <coughs> Listen, when there's a snow emergency, I get a phone call. You have the system in place. Let me, let me just finish. So I agree that, and my hope is, that once we make a specific recommendation 
then we'll get some press. I would agree it's too late. We, the, the more information we can get from the from property owners before we make recommendations, the better. But I don't think we're going to get any press. Don't you want to make it informed? Absolutely. Absolutely. So to, to suggest that after you make a recommendation, then you'll get publicity? There's mechanisms Absolutely. in this. He's right on. Uh, right. There's so, mechanisms to let people know. I shouldn't have to hear about this forthhand as a resident in this community paying taxes. By the way, this happens to be happening and a decision is going to be made soon. That's I can tell sense. you that I've talked to the Gazette, Chad Kane. There's been one article in the Gazette. It's on the front page of the Northampton website. There's a, right in the center of the web with a, a, a link to a whole article about this. Um, that's something anyway, um, for what it's worth. Um, the, the Gazette has all the recordings to this. This has been on the uh, North, North Street Association website as well. Um, I record every meeting we have, and they've been on, on that website. Um, and then the Northampton website has a right on the front page. Uh, I don't know, remember the date of the Gazette article. Uh, and I have, I think, one article about it here. Uh, but I, uh, March 7th, there was an article about us. It was, uh, I don't have the page number. B, it was in the B section of the Gazette. The B section of the Gazette? Yeah, there was another article in April, but I don't have that with me, so I can't tell you when that was. That's the only publicity I know about firsthand. And it's been very frustrating to all of us. It has. Sure. I have talked to my entire street. I live in Florence. All my neighbors told me they would be here. None of them showed. Yeah, I'm sure it's frustrating. So. Yeah, I'm sure you want to do the right thing. Okay? I just think that, so this isn't directed at you. It's a little frustrating on this side. You want to make a good recommendation <laughs> as a committee right. uh, that is informed before before it goes too far, I think you'd find a way to have that communicated. The way that's um, well, well, we do have, you know, and the committee, I mean, as you realize, I'm sure, is all volunteer, all and representing, all representing different <laughs> aspects of the community. We have residential and business institutional, really a good cross-section representing the community. So that's really the, I mean, at this point, we're just getting into the, um, sort of the, formulaic part of it and and whether or not our recommendation even ends up being accepted and used mm -hmm. is a whole nother question but you know we have I can tell you the from, from my standpoint I spent about 12 hours this week working on this on my own time at night till two o'clock in the morning etc it's the whole you know I think everybody here is talking about this with people that they know, but as a group, we're not, you know, part of our charge and our budget and, and time is not actually sort of making sure that it's being posted, you know, and, sure. and so it's, I absolutely encourage everybody here who's here and hearing it, please invite your friends. It's absolutely welcome, but keeping in mind that we have a specific charge and a lot of the issues that are being raised absolutely need to be raised with the city council in terms of whether this is, should happen at all. As far as how we do it, if it's going to happen, all of those comments would be great. Otherwise, we're never going to get done. Yeah. One, a little bit more I can tell you is um, Mary Ann LaBarge, Ward 6, asked me to be on the committee. Um, she started in, or we started in um, with different towns that got waivers and didn't have to pay this because they went to a convention with other mayors. Um, she very quickly found out for me that our, our charge doesn't um, include that portion of doing this. She says it, it goes on to different committees after this, and Ned, you might be able to fill us in on what the steps are after this, but she says that part of it, if we want to try and do some of these things to you know, actually not have to pay it, that doesn't that doesn't concern us here. We just have to come up with this, this fee, this way to earn the money later on in the different committees after this is when we can start working at trying to get other ways to get the money and grants and things that I found out from other research. Right now, that doesn't concern us. And I don't know if you want to take the time, Ned, to try and, and to tell us where it goes from here. I know there's a subcommittee and 
I'm not very political. The other places before it even gets to city council. Well, your recommendation goes to city council. From there, they bring it down to the ordinance committee, Ed Lou. I think those are the two committees that they're doing it at. Is that correct, Jeremy? Well, it'll be up to the council where it goes. So the, this task force recommendation is going to go back to the, the joint committee, which is the Board of Public Works and the city council. And from there, that committee will make a recommendation to the full city council. Okay. And then it will be up to the council to decide which of their subcommittees they want to have work on this. Um, ordinance Committee, Finance Committee, Ed Lou might be the three, I would think, but entirely up to the council how they want to go about it. Excuse me, Paul. I actually have to let Emory speak first. He had his hand up before. Uh, let me just provide a little historical perspective. <coughs> I was appointed to the committee along with everybody else uh, and asked to organize it. Uh, some of the committee members, I'm sure, sh share some of your concerns. But we didn't appoint ourselves, and, and the issues that you raise here, I think, properly should go back to the council. Uh, if the committee here feels really uncomfortable with the 31st deadline, May 31st, which I found out about by email less than a week ago, it was news to me, uh, then we, as a committee, have a choice. We can, we can resign. We can go back to the city council and say, no, we can't do it. I mean, th that's the choice that our committee has. But we really don't have any control over the charge other than to say we refuse to serve or go uh, engage uh, uh, city council in debate. Uh, so far, the committee, to the best of my knowledge, has chosen not to debate with the councilors. I mean, that's something we could do. And, and no one had resigned. Well, that's not true. One person did resign, well, but for other reasons. We're still on this particular item, and I think that you should have a discussion about whether or not that May 31st deadline is doable. So I think David brought up a very good well, point. Yeah, no, I, I agree, agree. Emory. As to your point about resigning or not, that's not really a choice. A choice is when you choose something, and the time to choose is when you were starting the committee on March 7th. And you tell them, you tell the committee that we need this done by May 31st, not seven weeks later. So it's not a choice. That's a forced decision on you. Okay, there's a big difference. So whoever imposed this is out of order. Well, and, and if it's the BT, BPW and it's, if it's the city council, because they have this, they want to ramrod this decision through, which we talked about in the second meeting, that we weren't going to make an informed decision fast. We were going to make an informed decision correctly. And that is where we need input from the public, that these things are out of order. So now if you're saying, you know, if you don't like it, resign, that's, that's inappropriate. It's disrespectful, and it's not fair. I, I think this, this point is uh, uh, well pointed. I, I think as the committee in, in understanding these, these issues, I made a comment before that we have to be cohesive, we have to be comprehensive, and we also have to be consistent. And I don't know if the consistency is there right now. And if we're going to have the task before us to be completed on the 31st, that's not that many weeks away. And if we're going to be the foundation going forward for recommendations, I don't think the 31st is fair. Okay. I think we're being put into a situation that we may not be presenting the correct Well, you say that it's five weeks away. Don't forget, that's only about three meetings. Right. Alan Sharp, and I live at 50 Russellwood Ridge here in Florence. I would ask that you, that you go back to City Council and say, we will not meet collectively. We are not going to meet this deadline. And I can assure you that that's going to get the public's attention. Because this, the, the, uh, the residents of this city have a right to due process on this issue. And if they don't get it, and you make a decision without giving it to them, it's my belief that any decision that you make will fail, ultimately fail. And that is going to open the city up to tremendous uh, liability in the future. And so if you rush this thing, we're talking about the value of people's properties. And if, and if decisions are made that impact, negatively impact the value of people's properties, in my opinion, it, 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 it's tantamount to it being an unconstitutional taking of people's properties. And I think that the city would have a, would have a huge problem 
It's you know just to, to reiterate that we're not making any decisions. No, we're, we're just making make a recommendation. recommendation. Yeah. We will be making recommendations, and and I assume that city council is gonna is gonna look at those recommendations and they're gonna want to follow them. That's Probably. what that's that's what you're charging. Right. And so if you don't have all the information, and the public's not able to speak about it, and there are things that slip through the cracks, and due process isn't given, that decision is ultimately going to fail. And in the long run, this city is going to suffer, and it's going to suffer big time. So I would ask that you stand up to city council and say, it's painfully unfair to the residents of our, of our, of our community. The residents have a right to be heard on this. And we don't care that this is your mandate. We're not following it. You want to fire us? Fire us. We're not resigning. One of the things that I brought up at the last meeting is I've been in contact with the city of Bangor, Maine. The residents up there are going to demand and they're going to sue to get a referendum vote on this issue if they have to. Because, again, it is an unfunded mandate by the present administration at the highest level. I, I can agree with everything that everybody is saying. When you get right back down to what, what are we doing here, we're really saying if we have a fund or a fee or whatever you want to call it, this is the way we would do it. Right. This is, and there are several proposals. We're not saying that here's the fee, this is what you want to do, do it. We're saying that if we were to do something like this, we would recommend this type of fee. The city council will look at that. They will have at least three public hearings. At least three full public hearings. I know that from experience and from long hours. Um, so I think what we're doing here is we aren't, to, to talk to the audience, we aren't saying that, that this, is, uh, um, this is the way you're going to do this. What we're saying is, if a fund is started, this looks like the appropriate proposal that would make it work. That's what's going to go to the city council. We're not going to make the decision that, that once it leaves here that there's going to be a fund. That's the city council's job. All they're saying to us in our charge, I think, is that if we're going to have a fee, how would you structure it? And we can actually mm -hmm. provide multiple suggestions. There's not a, our charge is not to come up even with a single one. <coughs> we have two or three that we can't really decide on. We'll give it to the city council. Or even if we have a preference, I think that you know. There's nothing wrong with showing them more than one option. Yes. Um, but I do, I do take Mr. Sharp's point that even though we're not the deciding body, our recommendation is going to carry some weight. Right. I actually, I actually think, mm -hmm. I, and, and I share Dave's concern about how the decision was made about the deadline, although I, 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 I want to cast our mind back to a couple of meetings ago where the original deadline was the 1st of May, and we all agreed that that was rather optimistic. Um, but I think that after our last discussion, where we actually spent some time um, sort of reeling in what our expectations of, of what we were going to be able to achieve um, uh, occurred, that, th that this idea of being able to generate at least some models for how a fee structure might work within a timely manner um, is, not, is, not, is not out of the way. It's not, it's not beyond us. Uh, we have on the table, and I haven't unfortunately had a chance to look at Dan's, but we have on the table tonight three options for you know how this might look and it there's no guarantee that any of these are, are are going to be the one that we follow through with but we have i think the basis for um an on you know a continued discussion a 
about what this thing might look like. I think we have within our purview um, the opportunity to get it done on a deadline that suits what the council is looking for. And, and, and my understanding of what the council has done here is look at this October deadline for getting a fee structure in place, work back and provided us with what they think is probably the best amount of time to get it done so that, it, so that it's the first step in this, as Jim points out, rather extended process. Um, I think it's a shame that the way we disperse information um, about these types of things is, is as poor as it is. Um, I'm, I'm going to put Terry on the spot and ask him, Terry or Jim, if they remember when the first public hearing, public presentation on stormwater was. Yeah, like, you know, six, six or seven months ago. So, you know, we've been, we've been thinking, the city's been thinking about this for a while. Um, and I, I have to say I was very disappointed by the turnout of those things, um, it, even though the material was really good. But we have been making an effort to do this. Um, all these things are listed as public hearings. Um, you know, I, 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 we've done our due diligence. We may not have achieved the level of saturation that we would prefer. Um, but that's the limit of, 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 of the resources we have available to us. And I'm not going to beat myself up for the fact that people don't come to my meetings. I'm just not going to do it. So, anyhow. Thank you. Uh, I, Acting okay. Chair, I'd like to move that we accept the date of 31st. Second. And let's vote on it, and then we can get on with it, one way or another. If we can't, we'll have to go back and, and have some conversation with uh, uh, the council. And if it's approved, then we can go forward. Yeah. May I, could I question the, the meaning of accepting the date of the 31st? Are you saying that uh, you're, you want to have something complete by the 31st and sent to them? Yes, okay. that's what I mean. Can I ask a question? What happens if come the 31st we don't have something? We just go to the city council and say, whoops, we didn't make it? We can give them what we have. Okay. You know, I mean, that may be... We actually have some things now. If we were to disband today, we'd say, well, this is as far as we got. Yeah. So we I can't really rec recommend anything, but here you go. There's, there's some We've things to work with. Four, yes. <laughs> right? four, four possibles <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> at this so point, the worst that could happen is they'd have four alternatives. Right. Yeah. That's the worst possible case. Four, I'm sorry. That's right. We're fine. <laughs> Whatever the number is. That's right. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> so, I'd like to, so before we take any more questions, I'd like we have a motion. To accept the deadline, we have it's been seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? opposed. Abstain? I'm gonna abstain because it's a I don't doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me. So no. What, what doesn't make sense? Uh, either accepting or rejecting. I, you know, I think we work uh, work away. We do the best that we can. Get to the point uh, that city council says, give us the stuff, and we give it to. That's what we just voted on. Nah, not really. You, you, you said, you know, we're going to stop meeting May 31st. Well, May, and May 31st is our, will be, you know, that's, we're going to provide whatever, wherever we're at and our recommendations <coughs> by May 31st. I mean, it conceivably could go forever. We can continue to meet just for the pleasure of meeting. <laughs> <laughs> as pleasurable as that is. So. Um, I also would say that come May 14th, if things, if we're like, you know, yeah. we're in the thick of it, and it's like we need more time, we can obviously more, yeah. so move yeah. to, have a you know what, we need to have another month or another week or two weeks yeah. or whatever. So, Jim. I just wanted to confirm who abstained from the vote so I can get it right from the vote. Oh, I, I, I do. And I just think there needs to be more clarity. Now that's a little bit more information I didn't have going in. And I think, again, we need to be consistent, we need to be clear. This is the foundation, and I guess being in the facilities world, this is where I come from. If we don't create that foundation, and the information going forward is going to be disjointed, as that just was, in my opinion. Yeah. And I agree with the gentleman there. I, I, if we're going to make a motion, we need to make sure it's clear. Okay. So, what are we recommend? saying on May 14th, if we don't have the information, we're going to go back, and we would ask for an extension? I mean, we have three meetings Someone would currently need to, that are planned. Someone would need to modify Emery's motion. I think so. Even though it's passed. Whatever. I mean, it's, a, it's not my call. I mean, if there's a question about it. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's a good point that it's not as clear. It's it oversimplified. Can I take point. a crack at it, then? Please. Um, 
friendly I move, amendment. I move, <laughs> I move that uh, uh, we, we use May 31st as a target deadline for final disposition of our materials, uh, with the caveat that at the 14th of May, if we feel that we're close but additional time is, is needed, that we will return to the City Council um, and request additional time, time to move forward. Excellent. That's well said. Would you withdraw your motion, please, before? I withdraw my Actually, I it withdraw is a my pass. motion. Pass. Yeah. Well, pass. we blew it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes us different than the city council. We go back, we rethink. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yes, I, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Okay. So, that's a, that, Chris, that's your motion? That's my motion. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. This is enough. Just to uh, refresh my memory of what's going on, what's the October 7th deadline? What's driving that? Jim? You've got to have a calendar. That's the deadline that the city would have to inform the state that their intention is to uh, start a new enterprise fund uh, because that may have an impact on the tax rate. Does so it have have anything to do with the stormwater mandate? It doesn't. Does not? It does not. Wait, I'm sorry, can you ask that question? What was the question? The question is, does the, what, what is the, what was the October 7th uh, date. Yeah, your follow-up question. And the follow-up question is, does that have anything to do with the stormwater mandate? In other words, no. yeah. and the answer is no. Mr. Walker. As you continue to debate this, can you define, will somebody define for me stormwater? Okay. Because the federal judge has ruled stormwater cannot be charged as a tax or anything else. Rainwater is something as an act of a superpower, known only God as we all speak of. Rainwater is an unfunded mandate and it is totally illegal. For the sake of, of argument here, um, I think we should use stormwater loosely this is a, a utility fee that we're looking that is addressing uh, issues related to stormwater and flood control and uh, that way we don't have to focus too much on stormwater rain or anything else like i said earlier the three quarters of the costs that are currently proposed in terms of uh, budgeting is infrastructure related, flood control related. So, which, yes, water is is a, a, a natural element that comes into play. It also destroys all the man-made elements uh, and things that we rely on, like our buildings and our cars and our city infrastructure, which we have to somehow uh, protect against. And that is really the primary function of, of what the fee will be funding, is that. So. Um, I'm right here. Yeah, I, my answer is I don't any no one on this committee, to the best of my knowledge, has any uh, enough legal training to make the decision about whether this is legal or illegal, or whether the judge is right or wrong. And while I don't suggest that's not an interesting question, I think that's a question for the, the council or counselor for city council, the legal representative, to make that determination. I don't think any of us here have the uh, background. I certainly don't. I know that. Uh, to say yes or no, or to agree or disagree with you, it's an interesting question. But uh, it's totally outside of our domain, our expertise. Thanks, Emory. Um, item 8, presentation of stormwater utility fee examples. I thought that we do them in the order that they've been submitted. And Terry, I hope you don't mind being first up. Is there a handout that we can follow? Or there, is, there is. You have copies. You've got All the task those. force members have copies, right? Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Sorry, Terry. No, we're going to the game. Sure. Bob. 
Yeah. There are. We have Ruth. Uh, oh, I don't have one. Ruth. Me, Jim has extra copies of everybody. Terry oh, and Bob. Uh, Jim, if you have an extra Jim, Bob, I, have... <laughs> I, mean, that, I don't want an extra Bob. One Bob is enough. But get an extra one of <laughs> one of Bob's. Uh, and Jim, can I have one of those? <laughs> Thanks very much. Jim, what do you need? Terry, I need Terry's. Uh, It sounds like everybody's gambling. Hey Jim. Is this organic or did you the extra bottle if you have something? Westfields. Like, I use Westfields. I was going to say it looks like Westfields. Yeah. Yeah. I just modified okay. it. More bottle. Yeah. All right. Can never get enough bottles. That's true. Okay. All right. So um, I have to admit this didn't come to me until. Uh, We've gone into this a few meetings. I think Dan and Bob and some other people talked about the common areas that we have, and which intrigued me. Uh, I understand from Jim that a little over 21% of the impervious area in the city, out of all of the impervious area in the city, is roads, sidewalks, and some of the paved common areas in the city. There are a number of ways to calculate the common area, but I thought that was as good as any. Um, it's certainly open to debate. My idea was to apportion the common areas based on lot size. So essentially, someone with five acres would pay more than someone with three acres or one acre. Uh, there are thousands, almost 7,000 residential properties in the city. Um, rather than trying to calculate 7,000 individualized bills, I propose dividing residential properties up into less than a half an acre, half an acre to one acre, one to five acres. And at that point, out of the 7,000, you've used up more than 6,000 of the available residential properties. Seven or 800 homes in the city have more than a five acre piece of land. So I propose up to a half an acre, half an acre to one acre, one to five. Uh, it turns out we have the technology to average the lot size within each of those categories. So for example, less than a half an acre, if I remember correctly, the average size residential lot is about 11,000 square feet. So I propose within those three categories to just use the average lot size in each group and the shared commons percentage is 21.5. So you take a hypothetical budget, let's say the two million we've talked about, 21.5% of that gets spread across the city based on lot size with the proviso that we just average those residential properties at the smaller end of the spectrum. Larger properties, commercial properties would get calculated case by case. So they would get an exact number for their portion of the 21.5% commons charge. The remaining 78% percent 
would be done by impervious surface. Again, we can calculate the average impervious surface of residential properties, and I propose just using those averages again, just to simplify the billing for small residential houses, of which we have thousands of them, rather than my bill being 15 cents lower than my neighbor's bill, whose bill is in turn 15 cents higher. You know, let's just standardize those thousands of houses. Larger properties, commercial properties, would get calculated again case by case based on exactly what they've got. So there'd be the two pieces. The commons charge, 21.5% in this case. The remaining would be billed based on impervious surface, the 78.5%. A friend of mine owns a business in Chicopee. Um, their water rates in Chicopee, this may seem like it's a little bit of field, but their water rates are go up as your usage goes up. The more you use, the higher your rate becomes. Um, they also have commercial versus residential stormwater fees in Chicopee. In our city, we've consistently had a flat rate. Coke, of course, uses much more water than I do at my house, but we say that we pay the same price per unit of water. That's just the way we've always done it here. I suppose you could discuss that back and forth, but I use the same methodology on stormwater. So Smith College would pay the same square foot rate for, for stormwater, their stormwater fee as I pay at my house or as I pay at my business. Um, it's easily, easy, easily calculated. You could calculate it to the penny. It's pretty straightforward, I, I believe. Uh, it seems inherently fair that we can calculate that's transparent. Um, and everyone, as we've discussed here, as you've discussed, everyone pays something. So even a, a, an acre of forest in the middle of the forest would pay about, in a $2 million budget, would pay about 18 bucks a year for that acre of forest land out in the middle of nowhere. That's my... Um, uh, that, that actually led me right to where I wanted to be. That, that $18 forest dollars per acres of forest land, that would be based on the commons? That's the commons portion. Uh, um, how, and I, I missed this, so maybe you didn't. Um, how would you talk about um, runoff that results um, from land that's not impervious, but represents large portions of land, for instance, you know, farmland or something like that? It's pervious. Yeah, it's pervious. Because it well, still they, generates runoff. They, they would, they would <clears throat> mostly be liable for the commons fee. That, that, but that would be the limit of there'd their be, liability. There'd be almost no impervious surface on that property. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, a car dealer is almost all impervious. Yeah. And so the impervious charge in that case would be a substantial portion of their final bill. Yeah. I understand. Okay. The, uh, kind of the same question. I mean, you're setting a max for residential at 86,000 square feet. Why? It seems uh, that, that that might be the maximum for all properties in the city. Where do you get the 86? For the, for the, the previous the five service. acres. Okay. Average, that's an average size. Right, but that's the maximum for a... For, for a, a standardized fee. For a standardized fee. There are, there are a few hundred properties in the residential, residences in the city that are over five acres, but the average size suddenly is 17 acres. I, I realize that, that but, but one of the real goals of the city is open space, uh, promoting and supporting agriculture. A lot of that agriculture is in the floodplain. It has not, your, your levees don't do anything for the, for the guy with 50 acres of onions down in the meadow. Uh, it's just, I, you know, I think that everybody needs to share some, you know, needs to pay into that fee. Well, that's that a commons fee, about 18 bucks an acre. Well, but that's a lot if you're a farm, you know, if you're growing onions. And, you, and you know, most of the time, uh, that when it's when it's frozen, true, it's uh, it, there's runoff, and in a flood, it's runoff. But most of the time, open space, particularly forest land, uh, absorbs water. It's part of the solution. It's part of the natural drainage in the city. May, may, may I ask a question really quickly? My name is Constantine Sarrows, two nine two Old Wilson Road in Florence. Prior, it, it's my understanding that in the town of Northampton, 
prior to clearing an acre of land, you need to get a water management assessment. Yes? Is that correct? Does everybody know that? Is the, is the committee so aware of that? The planning department requires, after one acre, you need to get a water management plan. In Prior to getting a building permit, you have to address uh, all concerns about the uh, water management. They will not give you a building permit unless you've addressed every issue of uh, your impervious surfaces and how they affect the, um, the runoff. Um, I myself, for instance, installed 4,500 gallon cisterns to take care of all my rainwater that hits my large roof. They go into the ground and then they, I use that for irrigation. That's the way I've addressed it. But it's not, I'm not saying how I addressed it, I'm saying that I have to address it. So if my impervious surface, and I assume that this water management um, situation is because of hardships caused by impervious, uh, non impervious surfaces, I assume that's one other than to collect funds for, for the city in some way. If this is to somehow assist the DPW in dealing with hardships created by these huge storms that we've been having, and is, is that is that correct? Is that for the assumption of how this everything is changing, the times and weather is changing, and we have to it's deal with it coming up? It's, 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 <coughs> as Dan said earlier, we have a levy system in the city, right, which is seventy years old, and the Army Corps of Engineers has told us we have to start maintaining. Understood. Um, that's a big piece of it. Secondly. The, the government does not care if we have storm drains in the city. We are under no obligation to have storm drains, none whatsoever. We're not talking about taxing rain. If we want to collect stormwater on our streets and dump it into the nearest stream, they have rules about that. And we're required to follow those rules, just as a factory would be if they're just dumping something dark brown into the river. We don't get to just dump our stuff willy-nilly. So the common speed is all the roads and the common impervious surface. Right. And I just I just feel that this is to me when I hear the word, you know, fee, it's to me I consider it a penalty. A penalty for being having a surface that water will run off of and be part of a stormwater issue. Mm -hmm. Okay? And what I'm saying is that the criteria that was required of me to build and the twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars that I had to put into creating a stormwater management plan. So you'd like to be place, absolved of further responsibility. I'm saying that no no, I'm not saying I have to be absolved of further responsibility. I'm saying that if stormwater is being addressed by the rain hitting a impervious surface. We have already made provisions for people that have cleared more than one acre of land for specifically for that purpose. For people who never had to make a stormwater management plan, maybe more at the uh, have a burden of responsibility. If you've cleared more than one acre of land and you've built in Northampton, you've had a responsibility to make sure that stormwater, that, that water does not affect the neighbors. It doesn't affect, um, you know, a hundred-year storm, a fifty-year storm. Uh, uh, doesn't, uh, you know, come off and it's absorbed into your ground, and you have to deal with it in your way. That's the way I viewed it. I don't know if that's uh, my other neighbors who've done this. You know, friends who've done the same thing. Um, I'd be more than happy to, you know. Uh, uh, thank you, Con and Terry. Uh, I think we're we, where we are in this part of the meeting. Is Terry has put together a, a great first look for us to have a framework and give us some options to think about. And it's not, as Alex has pointed out, there are a lot of a lot of things that we can, we're going to be able to take this framework and get through uh, Bob and uh, Ruth and uh, Dan. 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 Uh, <laughs> so we're, this is exactly where we want this information. So you, you were uh, very helpful in giving us the start to look at some things. And then we're going to be able to kind of push them out, push them in the way we want to. 
uh, because if we have to, if we're going to start to get into the devil in the details, we won't get through the, the rest of these frameworks. And this is, I think, what we agreed to, to do. So while all those points are valid, I think that if we can get through the other three templates, then we can start to answer some of these questions on a more global basis. David, I mean, yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I'm not, I completely, I, I completely okay. understand what you're saying, but you made a point earlier, which I thought was a point of convenience when you said it is not necessary to define what the point that you made, sir, about what the water being sucked into at 18, eight, what is it, what, uh, you know, an 18 acre right. farm. So if, there, if, if you need, really need to know what, you know, by definition, what water are you referring to, if it hasn't left the property to affect anything else other than inside being absorbed on your property, then how is it being, how is it being um, problematic or adding concern to the rest of the town or to the issues that the, the town faces? So that's why I think it has to have very specific definitions of what water we're referring to because that is the water of concern. There is water of no concern, in my opinion, and water of concern. Yeah. Do you agree, or I, that's? I think that. I, I think Con is absolutely correct. Uh, the uh, planning department has a whole set of rules and regulations. Anytime you disturb an acre of land, a half an acre of land, or whatever, then you have to go by those regulations. I think that once these proposals are all made. And then we start considering, you know, what the planning department has done to mitigate stormwater in the last few years. These new properties that we have out there may not be assessed the same as some of the older properties. You may have to look at that. And, but it's certainly... Uh, well, it's the last five years, I think, that the planning board has come up with this, with all of this uh, in the disturbance of land. Or it's longer than five years because it was when I was on the council. One more thing, Dan. And, and actually, Con, the details are what will help us filibuster past this uh, <laughs> foolish May 31st deadline. So yes, if we sir. get to the framework, then we can get all the filibustering, then we can move forward. <laughs> Yeah, and I would just I would respond just from my you know as a matter of convenience. It really that wasn't really what I was trying. To I say. understand. It's going back to sort of my original uh, the original presumption that the majority of what we're looking at is really flood control, and you know your the forty five hundred gallon cistern that you have in a flood condition will mean very little in terms of. When, when flooding is occurring. That is really what is driving this. And even with the meadows or farmland or anything else, all of that during flood condition, all bets are off. It's, the little rain is not really what the issue is. It's primarily this flood control. That's the perspective that I'm taking on it. I'm not sure if that's the right perspective, but that's sort of how I'm, you know, which is why. I, I completely understand your point, but. If it doesn't start with a little man like me to control that 4,500 gallons that's not added to the thing, right? Absolutely. So, and that's where credits are one of the mm -hmm. things that are being brought in that have, you know, I think, you know, Terry, you haven't really discussed the credit part of your proposal yet. And I was going to actually, there's a couple things that I thought would be helpful if you went into a little bit more detail on some of the. You know, some of those things, and even the costs that come out for the different categories. <clears throat> well, obviously everyone's asking about credits, um, and I think it, they make a lot of sense. There, there are examples throughout the city, as I say in my notes, of private stormwater mitigation which are failed to the lack of maintenance. Um, actually, there's quite a few of them, and some of them are causing real serious problems in some neighborhoods uh, where developers have put in specific stormwater uh, infrastructure that has not been maintained over the years. I think it's difficult, but not impossible, to figure out how to offer credits to residential properties. Um, rain barrels, a rain garden, it's going to be tough to... Uh, 
assess the actual value of that and put a dollar amount on it. And would we inspect them? Would you have to go back and look at the rain garden every year to make sure it's functioning as intended and it's being maintained properly? Um, I, I think what I suggest in my proposal was maybe for residential properties, you take a value, 10% of the incoming residential money and make, somehow turn that back to the people in the terms, in the, the matter of assistance, uh, discount or free materials, perhaps design help, I don't know. That was my thought for residential properties. For commercial properties and, and larger residential properties, I think you can assess the value of a particular um, piece of infrastructure. And as I said in the earlier meeting, I think I would recommend that even if someone puts the infrastructure in because they were told to, I don't see why they wouldn't get a credit for it. Um, I mean, it's there. It's they spent the money. They, they did the work. Are you talking about a dollar for dollar credit or? No, just credits on the bill. Some, um, of course not, you can't do dollar for dollar. Right, right. But uh, if someone has gone to some effort to uh, mitigate the run on the property, I think there ought to be some recognition of that, some credit involved, some financial incentive. Um, low income residents, the interest in that stuff? Or? Yeah, I mean, there's, you had a, I, in terms of those types of details, you actually covered a lot of those other elements, which I would think are helpful. There are, um, the DPW board and the board public works have struggled with uh, how to handle situations where low income people may struggle to pay fees. Uh, the city has a, a low income program. I believe uh, people who qualify are. Is it the um, city clerk who can who maintains that list? Tax assessor. Assessor. The assessor. Tax so, so we, th there there are pre-existing methods for keeping track of people who need a little extra help. Um, it's all standardized, and I would suggest that if the committee decides to make some accommodation for low-income people or people who need financial assistance, that we take advantage of the existing infrastructure for that, rather than trying to invent one just for this purpose. Um, and then as far as caps, I know there's been a discussion about should we cap things. <clears throat> My thought is that capping, say, residential disadvantages commercial, or capping nonprofit disadvantages commercial and residential, or I think it's difficult to come up with a capping scheme that makes um, it's really fair to the other groups that don't have a cap. On the other hand, just capping the entire budget, I mean, the, the place to work this out and the place where this will be worked out is what's next year's budget. If we have a fair way of apportioning next year's budget across the city, I think that's important, that the mechanism be fair. The battle may be at the city council is to can we really afford a budget of X number of dollars next year? Should we instead opt for a lower budget? Um, so I think that's the place to put the cap, that's where the cap argument ought to be occurring, I would say. And I would focus on making my mechanism, if it were up to me, as fair as possible and as transparent as possible. I think that's all I got there. Okay. And I just. Question. And this this isn't really directed to Terry, but um, I apologize. I have to go pick up a child. So I just want to throw this question out there because I haven't heard all the other options. But you brought up the tiered acreage um, um, example. I'm just trying to understand the thinking behind. So this is really directed at you. Mm -hmm. Just a question in general as you're going through all of these. You could argue that a person with uh, on your common area charge, a person with an acre or three acres or five acres, doesn't use the road system or in the city any more than the person with a half an acre. Uh, you could argue that the person that has a three acre site has less impervious matter on their property as a percentage of the total. And you could argue that the person with a five acre site is handling their water management on site already 
and contributing less to the problems of the community. It's another, you know, if you're going to tax, I don't want to use the word tax, but it is a tax. If you're going to tax people, you need to find, you know, you're not burdening someone because they have more land that has less impervious area and is managing water on site um, and not contributing. And they might even not even have any catch basins close to their property, so they're not even contributing to the flow in the community, as an example. Just things to think about as you're going through this. Sure. Um, Thank you. I have one question. Yes. Uh, you have 21%, but when I look at the table that uh, was passed out last week, the uh, right away is 30%, so what's the difference? Jim. I think, you got, I think you took out the federal and state highways. Yes, we did. Yeah. And I left them in, just when we get to mine, I left them back in mine. I, I mean, Route 91 was in the original. It's, a, it's more of a mental exercise because those are, whether it's 20% or 30%, it gets redistributed back out because those commons are not paying anything. But it is, that's one of the things I think we need to decide is, if we're going to have a formula that includes commons, what is the commons so that we get that out? It, it's going to get picked up somehow because ultimately we're trying to get to an end budget. It's sort of an iterative process. You know, if your budget's two million, what's the rate going to be to get there? And then all those other things contribute to how it gets redistributed. So we could do this whole thing without the commons. It's probably come out close to doing the same thing because. You just not have that, and it would just be based on people's properties. So, but your points are, are good. I think we need that's going to be one of the discussion points on, you know, on how we approach tiered and pervious versus impervious and, and all of those things. But again, we've got three more uh, examples, and some of that stuff might be covered uh, as we move on. So, thanks, Terry, for taking the time to do that. Mr. Reckman. So, I want to first thank Terry for giving a proposal we really look at and think about specifics that was very helpful to me to get a specific proposal. My, let me say a couple different things. I think the, the number we use for the common, whether it's 21 or 30, it's got to be figured out and it'll require some careful work by the DPW and the city assessor's office so that we know exactly what's in the comp. So that number, and I don't know whether it's 21 or 30 percent. I just don't know. But it has to be looked at very carefully, and I'm sure the DPW and the assessors can do that. But the current stuff is less than perfectly clear. There are a number of properties that are vague and have to, have to be sorted out. So I hope as we go forward, they'll do a, improve the accuracy of their ability to say what is city-owned property. And that's, in my mind, the only thing I think we can try, we can have it legitimately in the comments. But it could be wrong. So we have to get a better handle on what the comments actually is, whether it's 21, 25, or 30 percent. Okay? Um, my model is very similar to Terry's. I changed the top residential category to three acres. I said zero to half, half to one, one to three. After that, you measure everything else individually. That, may or may not be a good idea, but that's the only substantive change I made to Terry's proposal. I thought about having the commons charge be based on property value. And then I thought that was not a good idea because it, would, it was legally questionable. It may be too similar to a tax, and it seems that the having based on gross property area is a fine solution to that. I have, I have so that said, that, I, that I'm really Terry and I, our arms are linked on our proposals. We haven't discussed this, mind you. But I have four other things I want to talk about. Um, the first is the point Suzanne made earlier, that we need to get the word out to the people about what's going to happen. And the city council and the DPA will have to do a lot of that, but the more we can do it, the better. Um, it, so, and we're all going to go, not all of us, we're going to go to the storm control facility on Monday night at 4 p.m. I'm going to have a reporter there, maybe a photographer, so that should be a cool thing, and maybe we'll get a newspaper article out. So we need to get more publicity on this, on what we're trying to do. Um, 
the question of who's going to set the fee. I understand that the BPW will come up with a budget and presumably recommend a fee, but I think it's worth thinking seriously for the City Council about whether or not an elected body should set the actual fee that is created by whatever proposal is on the adopted. So to decide who sets the fee is a key point. Um, if property owners get rid of pervious surface, we wanted to have it make it truly be pervious. That's a point somebody made last time. Um, and there should be an easy method for applying for credits. Uh, and I think the credits in many cases should be, substantial is probably too big a word, but should be of meaningful size for people who have expended lots of money like Mr. Sears or people and who have inspected and functioning storm control, what, storm mitigation systems. So I'm all in favor of that kind of approach because we're making you do it. So you can get your money back. I think there was a, in the provisions of the storm water plan during the building process, if I remember correctly, um, Alan, I don't know if you remember, but there was a, there's a provision that says that the Board of Health has a, um, I don't think it's a, a duty, maybe it was the terminology or something, to re-inspect to see if everything is functioning after X number of years. Right. So it does, there always was a... Actually, the property owner has a duty. The property owner has a duty yeah. to keep it, but then wasn't there some kind of follow-up through the town if they chose to or something? Or if, if, maybe if, if it there's a deficiency, the town can come on and inspect right. it and, and make a recommendation. And right. in fact, there are subdivisions all over town which have got big detention systems. Some of them are inspected and maintained, they should get credits. Some of them are not. They shouldn't get credits. So the, you're not alone, uh, except that you're an individual, not a homeowner association. Anybody have any questions about my yeah. approach? Sure. Who does the inspections? For, for homeowner associations, they hire an engineer who checks it out and makes a report, file a report to the homeowner association, who then pass that report on to the DPW. Yeah. The, uh, the, about the owner pays for the inspection. Yes. Yeah. Setting the, the fee, uh, the, if, particularly if you're going to borrow money, uh, it, it needs to be predictable money. Right. You're going to have to have a base. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, I would assume that you, that you keep um, for the length of bond issues that you make. I would hope so, yes. Well, I can't, you know, the city, so the city council but, can't, could, 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 could so you, recommend. So you think that should the, harm the credit worthiness of the fund if they saw the city council was being curious? Is that right? Yes. The risk we take. Or not. Or not. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right now, the BPW is set to sewer and water fees, not the city council. Any other questions for Bob? So this uh, elected body would be like a utility commission. So you would elect, say, five people to look at the uh, budget that goes into the city council, and they would look at the amounts and the work no, to be done. No, in my mind, the DPW, DPW would come up with a budget of what they needed to spend next year to do to meet their mandate. And this elected body would do what? And that, and that budget would require a fee of a certain size. The city council would be the elected body who would set, actually set the fee. So the elected body of the city council. It's the city council, yeah. It, and it could be done, it could be set up so the city council would set the fee for the first five years. And after that, they could continue to establish five-year periods of control over the fee. But the fee could revert at some point if the city council so chose to the BPW. That's a good if you're not coming up with a five-year plan, you just... It don't, in, in, my, in my model, for the first five years, the city council would have control over the fee. Okay. And then after that, when, that was, when the five years was almost up, they could vote to retain control or the BPW. So what if the city council doesn't approve the fee that 
requires the budget. Big trouble. Well, I want the name of Okay. Bob, yes. I noticed in your uh, presentation here, it uh, gives the total storm, first paragraph, mm -hmm. the total storm water and flood control expenses of our city comes from two sources. The first is all roads, sidewalks, parking lots, public buildings, and land. How much money does this city collect from the state of Massachusetts, our state government, as well as our federal government in the course of a year. What reimbursement are we presently getting and where is that money being spent? I don't know the answer to that, Paul. I do not. It's my understanding that we have been getting a substantial amount of money from some funds from the federal government and they're just used wherever somebody decided. Well, that's not, not true. Not into a budgetary plan attack. We knew, we do know that the DPW gets road money every year from the state, Chapter 90. How much? Um, just a little over a million dollars. Okay. That's what? dedicated to that purpose and that purpose only. If it's spent that way. You can't spend it any other way. We're allowed to use it for engineering projects, for designs, for like the roundabout at Love Park. Oh, that was about $150,000 in design fees. Um, we use it for pavement and pavement management and maintenance. So the cracks in the program that we do each year for maintenance. Uh, mill and overlays, uh, I said general pavement management. We're also allowed to buy equipment for roadway construction equipment, um, dump trucks, things of that nature too. Can I, I'm going to just stop and we don't need to talk about that question with all these people here. Let's go back to the other things about proposals. Mm -hmm. Ruth, would you like to go over yours? Oh, sure. I was last, I think, getting mine in. Do you want me to cut in front of you, Dan? I just want to make sure that you have time to do yours, too, because mine is, was fairly long, and mine's, I didn't want... I can kind of gloss over mine, because I stole this. Ruth, are you going to turn the camera so it's looking down? <laughs> I don't think I can, because I can't see if I'm in the camera or not. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me. Nobody wants to see me either. We'll, we'll get Emily while I talk. How's that? Okay. <laughs> um, does everybody have a copy of mine? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, I went out to the town of Westfield. Um, I really like theirs. It's plain and simple. Everything we got seems to be very complicated. We have a goal number that we kind of picked as a kind of a $2 million limit, just a number that we seem to be aiming at. So I took the numbers off the spreadsheet that we have. I changed Westfield some. Uh, they just had one number for a single family. Um, 25 bucks. Yeah, 25, no, it's 20. It's 20, 20 divided by quarterly payments of $5. And I divided it up to single family, two family, and three family. Uh, I came up with the 30, 40, and 60. Just it seemed to be an equitable way to, to divide it out. Um, I have to apologize. I've had no electricity in half of my house for a week and a half. I got it back yesterday, so I didn't get a chance to give you a really breakout like everybody else did. I put together what I could really quick and get it to Jim in time to get it here. But um, dividing that out by the numbers on the spreadsheet, just for the, the residential single family, two family, and three family, I got uh, approximately $220,000. And then I upped the commercial from what they had in Westfield to the um, point, uh, zero 0.05 per square foot from Pervious and got a million, almost a million five hundred thousand. So just taking just those numbers and not all the other apartments and um, commercial, like I didn't have uh, Smith College figured in there. So by the time I just figured that out, I was almost at the money that we needed. It's plain, it's simple, it doesn't figure... You don't have to go into all the figures for all the streets and all these other numbers. Um, it was easy to understand. It's a lot lower for single, double, and three-family houses for all the people that are out there. Um, I checked, and Westfield does allow tax credits. They have a whole booklet about credits. Uh, it's not online. I wasn't able to get a copy of it. I did call them. I can run in and pick up a copy of it, which I will do now that I'm not working with electricians all the time. Um, they do have a low income credit. They use the assessor. If it's on the assessor's list, you get a low income credit. 
So we do have an assessor's list, so we can go by the same uh, thing. On the credits, it seemed to me that they've already done all the work. They've got the credits figured out. Um, we don't have to take all their credits, but the DPW folk are the ones that are the experts in all the credits that are out there. So if we find out what credits they have and then let them look at them and figure out what credits we should use, what ones fit for Northampton and what ones don't, because I'm sure different towns, different situations, um, they're the experts in that area as far as I'm concerned anyway. Um, trying to think what else I had. They have, I have their whole, in fact, I think, Jim, you might have already given us the whole ordinance for the city of Westfield. You send us so many papers. <laughs> but I have a copy of it here, and I put a few of their definitions in the, the paperwork that I sent out. They have everything already figured here. They, ex they give a definition for stormwater. They give a definition for everything you can use the money that, that comes in on. And we can modify these things, but all the work is already done. The money is here. The way I figured it out, and I, again, I'm not an engineer, so I'd like to spend some time with Jim, but this last, last two weeks has been a loss for me. I didn't really get a chance to do this as well as I would have liked. But it seemed to work for me. It seemed clear cut, um, simple, and it's, it just seemed to work. And it wasn't as involved and complicated. Everybody seems to be fair, paying a fair share. I looked at some of these, and some of the farms in Northampton, like down by the dog park, have great big, huge, long driveways. Even though most of their land is not impervious, their driveways are huge and long. I have a half an acre. But I have this little tiny short driveway, and I'd be paying more than these farms because they have huge acres, but a lot of impervious. I have a lot of acres, but I have a little tiny driveway. So, you know, with this, I'm a single family. They're a single family. We pay the same thing. It just seemed to work out more fair for me than, than some of the others. What do you do with four families? Um, that four family would be considered an apartment, is what I thought it would be. So, where is that machine? Uh, I didn't figure all that out here. Uh, in the Westfield book, they, they have all that figured out in here. I just didn't have time to put it all into here because I ran out of time to get it to Jim, so he'd have it here for tonight. So you're but gonna, it's all you're in expand here. It for next time? Yeah. So, that, yeah. that would be additional funds that aren't counted? They aren't counted in what I did, but they are gotcha. in the ordinance, right. yeah. Yeah, I do apologize. No, I just no, no. didn't have time. So I, th I think one of, the, one of the questions that we should probably, it's a, Westfield's proposal was, is very simple, and it has what they have that's not in your proposal. There's a cap for the commercial, which is like $640. Yeah, I didn't put that on ours. I left the cap off. And there are some huge properties, and I just think, you know, just to, just I want to bring that information out so we can, you know, understand what uh, that five cents means per square foot with no cap. Yes. It 0.05. Out, point oh, no, it's five point cents. Oh five. Point oh five cents, yeah. right? It's a half five a cent cents or five cents? Five cents. Point oh yeah, five dollars. Yeah. 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 Five, five, five cents? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So for the cents. VA Medical Center, they have close to... Uh, over a million square feet of impervious area, so they would pay about fifty thousand um, dollars. Holy crap! Yeah, it, it gets you know it's pretty um you know Cooper's um, with seventeen thousand, um, you know they pay about a thousand, a little under a thousand dollars. I mean it's the it, it does it's just something to discuss. I'm not putting a value judgment on either way, but it really puts a lot of the onus on business Commercials. Yeah. and not on residential. Dan, uh, Ruth, you, yeah. you're referencing uh, uh, West Hills Ordinance 1518? Yep. Okay, good. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's good. And then uh, in terms of the, the five cent representation that you just made, I think that's part of the, that's part of what someone needs to project to the public. Yeah. So when they see five cents, they don't know what that equates to. Mm -hmm. But if we publish the list of properties and started to, and I think uh, Terry had a couple of them, and Bob had a couple of them, whoever, you may have had a couple of them. 
but we published, you know, Clarion Hotel, VA, yeah. Roots House, whatever, and yeah. people started to see what the impact was. I think uh, that would raise, as close to Suzanne's point, uh, about what would happen. Yeah. And, and I other, did raise that too, Westfield is point four five. The other point that I'd like to make there is that is what you're proposing dollars. today yeah. before there are any increases. So once, if this gets past Bob's five-year mandate, and some non-elected board is able to say, we need a 9.8% uh, increase, we're talking numbers exponentially higher here. And that this, those numbers are what will raise the temperature of our citizens in Northampton. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jim. Uh, I think Dave raises some good points, and I think, um, we're happy to work with Ruth to put together a little spreadsheet on how these numbers look. Um, I think it would be, be great. pretty illustrative to see what they what they look like. And, and one of the things that you can do is, Ruth has made assumptions on, on residential rates. And once you have a little model set up, you can change the residential rates and see what happens to that nickel goes down and what the impact across the commercial sector is. So it's a, it's a nice system because it's pretty straightforward. It's easy to work with. You can look at those variables. Any other questions on, on roots? Thanks, Ruth. Yeah. Does anybody know how it works for Westfield? And what's, what's the experience? In terms, I mean, in terms of? The community. What is it? Is it a big uproar? Is it, I believe what someone does know. I think the important thing to understand about Westfield's fee is that it supplements the general fund. They have a combination of general fund and fee. They don't cover their expenses with that fee. Right, it's I think around half a million, five hundred sixty thousand is what that fee covers. And I don't know what their provisions are for increasing it. Or, you know, that one of the things we were talking about caps earlier, and Terry you brought up is, I mean, a lot of communities do bring in caps early on, uh, not with the intention necessarily of having them long term, um, but to stage the process in. And so that's something that we might want to consider as well is, is whether or not caps to uh, phase in the, the fee would be appropriate. Um, I, I, if I may, I, I, you talk about the fee. I think the city has the capability of doing a quarterly mailing on fees too. So it would be if, if you're 60 bucks a, a year, it's $15 a quarter. Fall into that, and and the, I believe the water and sewer is done that way now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I think what's going to really be painful is going to be the, the more the institutional and commercial when they're absolutely, yeah, and and, uh, and I think that uh, in developing those fees, we're going to take a look at uh, uh, some way of mitigating the uh, impact of that. Uh, yeah. And there's there's different ways of doing it. That's a. I mean, I, I mean like you said. Uh, the $15 spread out over four payments is a pretty decent you know, way of handling it. But if yeah. you look at the Miss Florence uh, Dino parking lot, absolutely and the impervious surface that's involved there. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. We're not talking about a $15 spread out over four And that, that, that right. little spot I used back to the pizza place, too. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We could do this with parking fees. Instead, that's a whole other. <laughs> we'll figure out per square square footage of a parking space and charge for stormwater. Um, well, as a, as a, as an engineer, I couldn't help myself but approach this from a completely engineering standpoint, and I apologize because uh, it may not be as clear as. Why do we engineers always apologize? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 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 um, so I made, I listed out um, five basic assumptions. The first one was um, the city contribution uh, to, uh, the, to the stormwater utility. The city currently pays uh, for water and sewer, to my understanding. Uh, and this as a utility, in my, my thinking is that they, uh, they would make a contribution based on uh, the city property, not the commons, which I'll talk about in a little okay. bit. Um, right now, the city carries, I think, somewhere between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars a year for stormwater-related um, expenses. 
Um, when I went through the whole process, it came out to about that, you know, about a little under three hundred thousand um, dollars. That wasn't intentional, but that's how it worked out. Um, the second part is really based on the fact that all surfaces have some level of imperviousness to them. Um, there is really no such thing as a completely pervious um, surface, particularly <coughs> when you have uh, winter uh, in New England where it's frozen, um, where the ground is frozen, um, when it rains and the ground becomes saturated, it stops be acting as a pervious surface, and that's when runoff occurs. Um, and there, from an engineering standpoint, when doing planning for site development, there are uh, runoff coefficients used to determine the rates of runoff from different types of properties or different types of surfaces. Um, I, I included a table here that had th three different um, soil conditions, forest, um, so disturbed soils, turf areas, and then impervious cover such as asphalt and concrete, uh, and a range of runoff coefficients. Uh, there are published lists that include cropland and, you know, all, we can get as detailed and as fine-grained as possible, but I like this because it was less work and had some fewer numbers to have to work with, uh, just to, to illustrate the point. Um, so, for the model that I ended up putting together, I had uh, a runoff coefficient of 0.95 and a all other uh, surfaces as a 0.15 runoff coefficient, which would be for lawns and um, you know, parkland and forested areas. Um, when you're calculating stormwater runoff, you would use that runoff coefficient times your the area of the surface times the rainfall, and we're going to replace rainfall with a rate so that it's more of a windfall. Um, now, in terms of, that's a, bad, that's a bad joke, I'm really sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Um, so, you know, one of the things from a fair and equitable standpoint is that water and sewer are metered, and we can't meter stormwater, even if we wanted to, we couldn't meter it, but the closer I think that we can get to actually quantifying it in a way that is, that has some basis to it, felt to me like that got us a little bit closer anyway to being fair and equitable. Because um, assuming that when it rains, it's raining the same uh, pretty much across the city, which is not necessarily a valid assumption as well, because rain does come down sometimes more locally than, than you'd like. Um, impervious versus pervious. Um, the, the reason I have this in here is, is primarily because of the data that we have. And one, this concern has come up, I think, in a number of areas uh, from another, a number of members of the committees. Is our data good? And we've seen numbers, even for, you know, comments have, have moved around. We're not very comfortable with the accuracy of the residential properties. The commercial we feel we could do for a reasonable amount of money. I think the one, it's one of the questions that we probably need to discuss is, if we were to use a formula that included surface areas impervious versus uh, pervious, we actually need to get that data. And it may be several, you know, several hundred thousand dollars to get that data, but you do it once. And this is, you know, for something that's $2 million a year, potentially increasing over time, it would probably be money well spent to make sure that it was fair and equitable. Again, if, if that's that what that says is measure. You calculate every lot, both figures. Okay, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Can't get more fine grain than that. But I mean, that's that's a dis <laughs> that's a discussion. I'm not saying that that's necessarily mm -hmm. what I'm what I'm recommending, but it is, I think, a discussion for you know, if we were going to go with a formula that included surface yeah. area as a major component, how accurate should that be? Um, the commons was another thing that I think really needs to be defined as Bob yeah. as Bob said. Um, I don't include city property in the commons. I include things like streets mm -hmm. uh, and highways. And I actually use the original numbers that had come out that included, uh, you know, state highways and everything that was coming in. I'm not, as it turns out, mm -hmm. the way I did the commons really, it ends up being the same amount added. It's a percentage that gets added to everybody's bill. If we don't use the commons, that same percentage will be. So it was sort of a mental exercise in the end. I don't. 
for this particular formula, it doesn't really matter what the commons is, but it does matter, I think, in other formulas. Terry's, yours was definitely, you have to know what the commons is if you're applying, you know, a dollar amount and then putting it out based on gross area. Um, so the variables that I, that I use in the spreadsheet, and this, you know, I'm happy to provide the Excel spreadsheet if anybody wants to review it and, and check the, uh, the formulas and all that stuff. Um, impervious area, which I had include, included as roofing, parking, driveways, paved and unpaved, um, and surface recreational areas, patios, basketball courts, etc. cetera. Um, unpaved parking and driveways would be handled as impervious areas because they're compacted and they essentially act as an impervious surface. Um, the presence or absence of asphalt would not be the determining factor for impervious determination. And I think this is important because I think a lot of people's reactions are going to be, I'm just going to rip up my pavement, which actually is not going to decrease their stormwater, but will increase the amount of maintenance that the city will face in terms of uh, solid sand, crap. silts, all that crap. Um, you know, the pervious areas could be pretty fine-grained or not. We can generalize it and say anything that's it's either pervious or impervious, or we can actually break down uh, pervious into multiple categories. Uh, the runoff coefficient uh, comes into play, and then a fee per square foot. Um, the, so the spreadsheet that I put together um, used the 0.95 for impervious, 0.15 for, for pervious, I hope I said that correct, and a rate of 0 0.009 or 9 one thousandths of a dollar per square foot. Nine tenths of a cent. The numbers come out. Would, um, you, would you just do that one more time? The adjust, adjusted impervious. <coughs> what's the adjusted impervious surfaces? Um, let me see. So the adjusted impervious um, was is the designated impervious, which is what the city has provided us, times the runoff coefficient. Okay, I'm sorry. So, probably not the right terminology to use, but at late at night, that's what I came up with. <laughs> um, and then, you know, going, looking at what the fees that actually came out, you know, for one family, you know, the average one family cost was about $115 a year. For some reason, you know, and again, I, this is all about data. I just, I took the aggregate data, you know, two families was $66, uh, three families was 74 and mobile homes got get whacked with $240. I don't quite understand it, but I'm thinking that maybe the mobile homes are on a large piece of property. So one family is the most expensive? In this formula. Wow. That's the average, but don't forget, it's the one family, the ag it's an aggregated value. You're going to have a small property that's going to be, that could be $50 and a large property that could be several hundred dollars. But so the it's point is the fee he's going to determine is not going to be based on an average of anything. It's going to be based on the actual size of your property. Yeah. Oh, so you're not going to wind up just... Okay, no, now he's not this is done we could, and we could, that would not be a hybrid. Yeah. But, so these are, just, these are the averages as they come out, but I don't know what the range is because I don't actually have... You know, Mr. Zimnock's recommendation at the beginning is really what applies here. It's like, you know, where do these, where does everything fall? But now that you've got this done, you're not going to go back and, and say, okay, now you're not going to go single family, one family, two family. You're actually going to compute for each property? Right, yeah. Okay, because yeah. I saw single family. I thought you were going to go with that. No, that's just because that's what the city gave us as data. Oh, okay. Was. And, okay. and it's aggregated, you know, aggregate data with gross area and impervious area. And it's almost, you know, I don't have... So if you have a, if you don't have a, if you have a small property, you know, so the the gross area has an impact on the on the, the fee that you pay. Okay, so a half an acre, but a quarter of an acre with woods and a little tiny driveway is going to be significantly be. less okay. than yes. <coughs> so, me. but a large house and a large piece of property is going to be a probably a pretty substantial fee. But nothing, you know, it's not going to be on the order of, you know, I had to be a medical center is around 17,000, which is still quite high, but that's probably near the upper end of, uh, 
of, the, of where the rates fall out. Yeah. So, so this has the great advantage of being truly equitable, I would argue. It's going to be hard to put in place, but it seems to me almost perfectly fair. Well, it's very quantitative. I mean, it certainly illustrates the, the fallacy of charging for one family, two family, yeah. three family. Mm -hmm. They're different. not related to, yeah. to the... When you're, and you're also making some assumptions that this is correct. Yeah. It really does need to be checked by, you know, some other people on that. Right, but the aggregate numbers are probably close. So and if we adopt this approach, everybody in town is going to know when we're doing it. Mm. Yep. They're going to be out there measuring your property. I mean, will you do it by GIS? I don't know. Talk to James. Uh, we can check uh, the formulas from the spreadsheet again if you send us the Excel okay. and we'd be happy to That'd show be great. Okay. All the all the impervious area comes from calculations with yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do we know how they do this? And how accurate it is? Well, it would be very accurate, particularly if you're gonna do it by every lot. Do we know? I'm telling you it is. Well, I'd like to see numbers. Well, we have the square area, and the assessors have square area. I would assume very well. Yeah. Pretty well. People have been appealing those and fighting over them for 100 years. <laughs> we have gross area, and we have house footprints. footprints. Driveways. The drive in driveways, I don't know if that's how well that's defined. That's, you know, you got most of it there. It's the driveways that are going to be the difficulty. I want to just be mindful of the time at 7. 28. I don't know if people want to go over or. So, what do we want to do next? You're going to run some spreadsheets that show the, the monetary implications of each of these four models. Is that right? Well, we're going to help put flesh on the bones of what Ruth did. We're going to check uh, Dan's uh, formulas and things because he's been up late working and trying to land this thing. Yeah, I'd like to see some numbers for some of the properties, including Smith College. I think we really have to. Yeah. <laughs> acknowledge the big institution in our midst. And there are many, I think there are so many elements that we, regardless of which one we go, there's all of the things that we need to decide yeah. is how are we going to define comments? Are we going to yeah. deal with the city property? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's right. it really opened up from when as I was doing this. Boy, yeah. there's well, as many questions here yeah. as anything else that we need to talk about. So my yeah. definition of the comments would be all city-owned roads, sidewalks, parking lots, and buildings. Um, and, yeah, that's it. I mean, school park the schools, every city-owned building, and all the roads we use, and sidewalks. And then, so there would be no general, there would be no contribution from the general fund towards, we would just I don't know. That's what I call the comments. That's all I'm saying. I'm happy to hear other ideas. Ruth? Actually, are we deciding who they build? Are we just giving the formula to the city council and let them decide what they do with it? Well, it's a, I mean, it impacts what... It'll it, make a difference about our recommendation. Yeah, it would. Whether we make the $2 million if, or not. If the city is not taken out of the general fund, then it means it's going to come out more yeah. in the utility and the fee. Yeah. Alex? I just... Uh, somewhere in, the, in these... I'm possibly in the minutes. It said that we had uh, agreed that the, that the city needs to make a contribution that that, that that needs to be part of the calculation. But that's certainly not what a lot of places do. They just simply exempt city property, city roads, uh, instead of circulating, and you spread the cost to the rest of the uh, of the property owners in the city. Yeah, I would argue that. Really, it's, it's a financial shell game where you're just moving money from one pot in the city to another pot in the city. Um, and I, so I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not naturally inclined to do it that way. Having said that, however, we already charged the city to do the water and sewer, and I think, I think it would be kind of confusing to charge them in that situation and not charge them in this situation. I think, I think if the city wants to revisit how they pay for their, their services, that this isn't the forum for that discussion. But that's just me. 
and then pay license fees for the vehicles they have, and you know, so it goes. Mike. Um, I was doing a study on the runoff area in Brogan's Brook area, and I was noticing Smith Volk had the highest impervious thing without any detention structures. So really, if you exempt city property, it's really not giving them incentive to take care of their runoff. No skin in the game. Which is very substantial. Yeah, agreed. But the city isn't being going to be. It's who pays for it. I mean, if, it, if if the city pays for it out of the general fund, then it's a limited population of people who are taxable in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the in the all of the um, the formulas that we're doing now, we're just spreading that cost among, we're taking that cost and spreading it across uh, the rest of the properties. In effect. So again, I mean, it just—it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that. Are you going to do four spreadsheets like this for all four options? Did I hear that? No. No. Oh, yes. That's Dan's spreadsheet. None of us can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's Jim's spreadsheet with a couple of things added. You're but not going to do. It. We're going to—we're going to get some sample figures for properties. Get a, take a dozen properties yeah. and show what they would each pay. Under this, under the four different models. Oh, all right. Is that right? Yeah. It's right if you tell me it's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. That's what we did. Not here in 12 or And does it add up? Is the other thing. Does it, you know, in, in the aggregate, are we coming close to the yeah. $2 million with the plans? What would the fees have to be to get $2 million? Yeah. And the, the, including the city. What, besides the skin in the game, which may or may not actually be a real issue, was that there's already a line item for this that, as a taxpayer, I didn't want to see get gobbled up somewhere and just go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So there's four hundred thousand dollars that's there. There now, yeah. mm -hmm. you know this this captures that, yep. you know, and it is for applying this. You know, it's a utility, and if we're Looking at utilities, we're being consistent in how we apply the utility. So, my my one concern about that is that the four hundred thousand dollars, I think, um, is going to come in useful um, in in years where the rates don't bring us to what we need to do around a certain project. At BPW this this year, we did, for instance, cash for what was it, the uh, Bradford ex Bradford extension? Industrial Park Store. Yeah. And, and that was because we and it allowed and we were able to do that without increasing the rate this year as much as we might have because we had that cash buildup. Yeah. So I think there are going to be times when uh, extraordinary circumstances where either you know we're going to have to do some sort of borrowing uh, or something else where. So I, I don't think I don't think the the imagery of four hundred thousand being gobbled up is necessarily accurate. There are, I think there are good ways where that money might get spent and that having the ability to bank. A couple years of that to build up towards a specific project might be something we want to do rather than dedicate it to something we know is going to be a rate structure that's going to be there every year. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. just uh, one comment is probably not too important, but I was looking at these numbers in the table and uh, I looked at the total square area for Northampton that you have listed here. It's much less than what they have for the square area in Wikipedia. There's about a square mile that's missing. So I'm wondering about the accuracy. Water. What's that? Water. No, Doesn't it's minus water. Uh, yeah. Well, there's I mean, uh, some of these numbers, I think, you've got to look at. How big a difference is it, I mean? Well, it's almost a square mile. How many? Almost a square mile. Yeah, but, and so what's the total area? Out of 70 square miles? I have no idea. I, I don't know. I'd have to go but we don't, don't remember. Yeah, but, but it's important to, uh, to understand if it's one square I think mile or square miles, square miles it's, that's 1%. That's I, think not, it's, I think it's six or seven square miles. Yeah, that's pretty substantial. So that's pretty substantial. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's one of, the, one of the reasons for potentially, you know, approaching this and getting the data that we need to do it. Or, you know, 
Ruth's approach, which has a, a equal merit, to keep it simple and get it through. And there's, there's, there, there's, there's two sides, there's definitely two multiple approaches here. It's, you know, what passes the fair and equitable test. Jim. Um, just briefly, we can check Wikipedia to find out what the deal is with that. I think people should feel fairly reassured that the data is actually in pretty decent shape. We know that there's some things with land use codes and things that are a little odd and would need to be checked before any type of system was ever implemented. The other thing is the impervious area that we have from GIS is also pretty good. When we work out an example for Cooper's or Cooley Dickinson, I mean, these are real numbers. You're going to look at those. You can have faith in that these bills that we're presenting, like the ones that Terry presented in his uh, alternative, I mean, those are real, those are accurate numbers. Um, the numbers are going to be even more accurate coming up in June, July, when Mass GIS produces uh, updated and previous area information that will be available. So there seems to be some hesitancy about the data. I want to just reassure people that the data is in pretty decent shape right now. We're aware of a few things that, um, that have come up that, um, in terms of use categories and things that are, uh, there's some discrepancies there that need to be, um, need to be straightened out with the, with, the, with the assessor's office. We hadn't really checked Wikipedia. We're happy to look at that and see what that's all about. And then just getting back to Bob's um, comment earlier, we're happy to prepare some comparison of the four um, systems. I think it might be helpful for people in terms of like common properties and crank them through and see what they look like and have them for the next meeting for people. That was a good idea, Bob. So we're happy to, uh, to put something together and, and send it out. Thanks, so you've done some sanity checks on the impervious area? We have. Okay. Our next meeting. I didn't get the handout with the credits. What page was that? We don't have a handout. We don't have it. Everybody's in favor of credits. We aren't any more specific about than that. Do you have Terry's um, example? Have, does it say does it say credits in there? Yeah, yeah. Well, he had a discussion about. I thought you had some discussion about There's credits. Some narrative. Narrative. Oh, yeah. Uh, yours, yeah. But the yeah. last one I got, that last page, the last, the last one I'm looking at when you're discussing yours, I didn't see any pages on it. I didn't have, I didn't, uh, I was asleep <laughs> by that point, I think. <laughs> oh. If we our next meeting? If I could, I think there's a whole book of credits coming from us. From Westfield. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there is. So Ruth, we can, Ruth, can look we talk about that after? What they're doing. You wanna, can you and I talk about that after? Sure. Sure. Um, action item review. I don't know, is anybody else going to be able to put together some yeah, more if, examples? If, if anybody else wants to come up with that'd be very helpful. Yeah. Not the next meeting. Next please. meeting. One week or two. Well, I would say, given the May thirty first goal, it would probably be better to have it as soon as possible. One? Yeah, one next week. Next Thursday, five thirty, or our chair was better. Oh, yeah. Our chairs will let us know. And this time I'll read the memo. <laughs> <laughs> There's multiple spaces. The reason why it's moved is not, you know, we tried to get the. Uh... Well, as I told you, I had six people that were coming tonight, and I was under the impression at the last meeting it was decided. Now, two of these people don't have computers. One of them may have checked, but they were going to have to come directly from work. I know they went to City Hall, I guarantee you, and they're going to be on my butt tomorrow morning. Well, so just for the record, the places that we that we try to reserve, JFK, the community room at the police station, City Hall, hearing rooms, and so and possibly the fire station if those are all booked. I mean, have, that's sort of our limitations. We have to go. Yeah, I went to a different spot myself later. So, yeah. so, 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 so what's the date? Place. Next Thursday. Okay, we're here. We don't not know. We do not know. We have to reserve. Okay. I got you. The meeting will be posted. I'll, I'll find this place. Okay. It'll be online also. It'll be on the. All of the information that you see at this table that we've talked about is all at the city's website, at the DPW website. You can look at it, you can download it. How about the yeah. newspaper? I think the Gazette needs to be. It'd be great if they would cover it. I hope they're going to cover our tour of the flood consultation on Monday. We're doing all we can. Where is that going to be? They don't have any writers in the flood control station. Flood control station. So hopefully there'll be a good article like that. So that's the 25th. Yep. 5.30. Yes. Any new business? Meeting adjourned. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Sorry about going over. but.